So today I would like to answer the question, will I get in trouble if I show these people my butt? It's an important question, uh, and knowing the right answer uh, is, a, is a critical skill for navigating life. And maybe you think about this a lot, um, or maybe you've more or less figured out the answer for most of the spaces that you occupy. Uh, now, intuitively, the answer is pretty straightforward. It depends on who these people are. But the way I'd like to approach this question is from a more theoretical stance, uh, namely borrowing from a really important theory in institutional studies called institutional logics. So in order to understand what an institutional logic is, let's think about what an organization is. We've got an organization, right? A group of people who are trying to accomplish something together, and they're informed by a set of practices, by policies, Organizations have a set of goals and values and decision-making frameworks. And uh, one of the things that the, the, the scholar or the uh, sociologist, a communication scholar, is interested in is, well, where did all these practices and policies and decision-making frameworks come from? And some of them are uh, idiosyncratic. The organization or the individuals inside of that organization made them up. They came up with these things. But often... And I would say most of the time, organizations draw on broader institutional frameworks in order to inform how they organize. Okay, so what is an institution? An institution is a broad, supra-organizational social framework. Um, so they're these big social constructs. And in practice, what they serve as is like symbolic reservoirs from which... Uh, uh, particular um, organizations uh, pull practices, values, uh, and symbol sets to, to structure their material and social organizing. Uh, so what's an example of an institution? Well, um, the capitalist market is an institution, and there are a set of symbols and practices and values and norms associated with marketplaces and the, the pursuit of profit uh, and organizations that consider themselves for-profit entities or businesses fall into line inside of that broader institution called the market. Uh, so what's another example of an institutional logic? Another institution might be the bureaucratic state, right? Write things down. Uh, you want to have things so that they're um, administrated fairly and by, uh, by policy uh, and have rule-governed uh, decision-making processes. Uh, and so if we list out different institutions that exist in society, we get things like the family and community, uh, religion, uh, education is an institution. Um, and along with each of these uh, different institutions comes a set of logics, a set of uh, words that get used, symbols, metaphors, origin stories, and values. So two organizations that more or less do the same thing can be very different, can operate very differently if they're based on a different institutional logic. So let's take, for instance, the example of sheltering people without homes. You might have one shelter, which is uh, drawing on the institutional logics of government, of, of the state, a bureaucratic state. And you might have another shelter, which is doing the same thing, helping folks who don't have uh, a place uh, to stay, uh, to have shelter. Um, but is drawing from the institutional logics of community or from church. Um, so how might these two shelters uh, be different? Well, the community shelter uh, is, might be more interested, say, in hospitality, really, really concerned with how people encounter the space as they move into it. And the state-run shelter might be really concerned with taking very accurate records of every person who comes in and the services that get rendered to those particular people. Um, and it turns out that answering like a really long survey when I first walk in the door, like doesn't do very much for the hospitality of the situation. Um, but it also turns out that just being welcoming and never writing anything down, yeah, it's like pretty bad for there being anything like a searchable record for what the actually went on. Um, but rendered inside their own institutional logic, of course, community or church should be something that's hospitable. And of course, something administrated by the state should have a clear record 
um, that it's following the laws and practices uh, that have been established by the government that is funding it. Uh, so one of the things that we find is that institutional logics uh, both enable and constrain. Uh, so the state-run shelter might struggle uh, connecting with people um, on as much of a human uh, uh, framework, uh, but it'll be pretty good at being able to, say, render a record uh, of its practices. Uh, one of the things that as working with an organization that is funded by the federal government, it gets its money from HUD, and it follows all of the HUD practices. And um, because of that, one of the things that it is capable of doing is looking at all of the people that it has given housing to, and then asking, what is the racial breakdown of the people that we have given housing to? Uh, and because it follows a set of mostly fair practices, uh, when you look at the people that get housing that come out of the institution, it tracks almost identically to the racial distribution of people experiencing homelessness in the city that the organization is situated in. So that's a really beautiful example of how bureaucracy or a bureaucratic logic enables um, the organization to deliver um, something that um, is valuable, namely a fair practice. Whereas a community-run shelter might not keep track at all of who it gives its housing to. And I've encountered really innovative um, community-run shelters uh, that also have uh, housing attached to them. But the housing is usually given on like a, 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 a trust basis or a, a friendship basis. Like if you've been working inside the community and you're known by the people who admin, you know, decide who gets housing, that's what gets you in. It's more or less decided by special cases. And um, given the fact that there are impacts that race has on how social networks form, uh, one of the things that you might find is that a community-run shelter could be deeply racially disparate um, in who gets like ultimate housing resources. So the state would be flip side um, more constrained with respect to say innovative practice. Um, Maybe they get edicts, this is exactly how your programs are supposed to go. Or maybe it's more informal lack of creativity. Well, I'm not going to try this new thing because it's not recorded anywhere what the practice should be, so I don't want to mess with it, right? Or I just experience the kind of institutional pressure to look like all of the other entities that get money from the entity that I get money from. So I don't innovate my programs very much because I'm locked into the way things are written down. So that's an example of how two different institutions um, guided by, or two different organizations guided by two different institutional logics um, might be delivering more or less the same thing, shelter, uh, might but do it in an extraordinarily different way. Um, and this influences the language that gets used. Just think about how, um, what, what do you name the person who walks into an organization uh, seeking some kind of help? Are they a customer? Are they a client? Are they a guest? Are they a patient, a member, a brother, a parishioner? I mean, all of those words are laden with different values and meanings. I treat someone who I call brother differently than I treat someone who I call guest and differently yet than someone who I call customer, right? And so you take value frameworks like the customer is always right. Um, and flip that out, the parishioner is always right, or the client is always right, or the child is always right. No, like the, 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 the value framework falls down when you start using different symbol sets. Um, so I want to return to the question of buts. This is a, a real conundrum that happened um, in an organization that I was part of. Uh, I was at, at working for a school that had a theater program that was for high school students. And uh, high school students would come into the college and they would do theatrical performances for the high school students and then they would go home. And um, in one of these performances, they were doing one, one scenes from all of these different musicals. And one of the theatrical companies chose uh, to do uh, the song at the end of the first act of Rent. Um, and if you're familiar with this musical, um, one of the characters moons the audience uh, as the uh, everyone is being rambunctious on stage. 
so uh, this caused a pretty big scandal. Um, and parents were complaining and students were complaining and the director of the program ended up resigning um, because uh, it was inappropriate. And now how you feel about this situation is actually not that interesting to me. I, I mean, you can tell me if you want, but um, I think that institutional logic is really instructive here. Um, so uh, will I get in trouble if I show these people my butt? Um, if you ask that question as a theater performer in most theater contexts, the answer is no. It's not even that edgy of theater if somebody sees your butt in the theater, right? Because theater is a place that generally celebrates the human body. Uh, it is expressive and yeah, it is about uh, uh, pushing the boundaries of our, our humanity. And so yeah, like nudity in the theory, theater is pretty normal. Um, but if you ask the question, Will I get in trouble if I show these people my butt? And, and who you are as a teacher inside of a high school, the answer is absolutely yes. Absolutely you will get in trouble. Do not show your butt. Um, it's, it's, it's not that there's like a universal rule about butt showing. It's that there are different institutional Sim way, there are different institutions that exist inside a society. And as you start moving throws through those different institutions, there's a different set of values that gets assigned to different kinds of practices. And so the practice of butt showing um, is valued in one context, even celebrated uh, and deeply, deeply um, uh, forbidden in, in other institutional logics. And while that's a playful example, um, when you start to think about, um, say, should we be biased uh, towards one group or another? Uh, there are some inst institutions that should, should be biased, right? Like um, a, a capitalist logic is rooted in biasing something that's more efficient than less efficient. Um, whereas efficiency is definitely not how, say, a family should be oriented, right? Um, but um, families like... Uh, yeah, a much a, a much less fluid construct than than, than markets um, and don't necessarily value a total fluidity in, in the concept of family. Uh, so what counts as good and bad? Um, what how we should make decisions? Uh, what language should we use? What policies should we have? What practices sh um, should we uh, embody? These are informed by these broader frameworks, these broader institutional logics. So it's not as simple as um, all organizations just have one uh, because it turns out that there's actually a set um, because there's multiple organizations are sometimes hybrid in their institutional logic, which is just a fancy way of saying they pull on multiple registers from across society uh, to inform their practice. So um, a, a, a pretty straightforward example of this is um, like social enterprises. Um, so Tom Shoes or Homeboy Industries. Uh, are organizations that are in part guided by market logics, um, but are also informed by uh, the notion of nonprofits or uh, charity or community, or in the case of homeboy industry, also church. Um, St. Louis University is another, uh, for instance. So um, St. Louis University is a school, so part of its part of it, the institutional re um, uh, register that it draws from uh, is the educational institution, but it's also um, a nonprofit organization and nonprofit organizations in the United States are simultaneously corporations and um, yeah, and also uh, have a nonprofit designation, but they both have to participate in the market logic to a degree um, insofar as they're incorporated, um, but they're also informed by the institution of nonprofit practices. Um, and SLU is also affiliated with the Catholic Church. So simultaneously, you have an institution which is church-based and market-based and nonprofit-based and education-based, and maybe some people also find community there. Uh, and there are opportunities and constraints in hybrid organizations. So the opportunities being you have a broader set of symbols that you can draw from, but of course the constraint being is that uh, you might have a mixed audience um, and a decision that makes sense inside of one um, institution makes very little sense inside of another. So from the perspective of an employer, um, of course you would wanna provide the most comprehensive medical care that you could. Um, from the perspective of a church, you maybe shouldn't 
pay for abortions if your church believes that abortions are immoral. Uh, and this was a thing that happened in a university that was part of uh, that uh, got into like a really symbolically complex terrain as uh, it was trying to figure out <laughs> whether or not its health care uh, should include elective abortion. So uh, why does institutional logics matter? Um, well, I would say that first um, way that this is a useful theory is it going to help you navigate moving through organizational spaces. If you are capable of identifying the, identifying the institutional logic that informs a particular organization's practice, um, you can predict um, and better identify the things that are going to be successful or warranted in that space. Uh, it's also really helpful for innovating, uh, figuring out new practices that an organization can have. So if an organization is deeply rooted in one institution, uh, ideas that come from different institutions will seem very new uh, and innovative uh, coming into that space. But you also have to be mindful of they might have less support and uh, implementing them might require more trust or more work. Um, and at the end of the day, it helps us answer the question, will I get in trouble if I show these people my butt? Because you can figure out, well, what are the institutional uh, frameworks here and uh, how do they feel about nudity or butts.